Hi, welcome to chapter three of tutorial one for collections managers on Saurus. In this tutorial, we'll create an object, um, but we won't finish creating the object because as we will describe the fields used in the object creation in quite a lot of detail. So we will probably end up splitting this over about three chapters uh, for creating our first object. We've just finished creating locations in our museum. So we are going to move on to the create menu, hover your mouse over create, and click on objects. You will then see the object creation form. Um, it's split into tabs as most of the content types are on Saurus so you can hop across to the relevant fields quite quickly um, and at the bottom of the page you will see the channel browser which is a, it's actually a view which is just putting in uh, the various filters that uh, are relevant for the Robert channel classification system. We have about 10,000 terms available and these fields apply to the classified name field on Saurus. So you aren't allowed to enter new terms into this field dynamically. It has to exist in the classification system first. And this is where most of the standardization across the museums in South Africa will occur. Um, up for the, most of the collections that we've uploaded to Saurus, we've left this field blank and left it up to the curators to choose the formalized term from the general terms um, and our naming committees that we are setting up will be um, adding new terms to the basis uh, or foundation created by channel so that the South African terms are available for um, all South Africans in all the museums. So our code is usually the same as the accession code plus the acronym so for our test museum we are going to use TM and 001 as our first code. This doesn't need to be accessioned in the museum before you create the object. So you can go ahead and create your objects before they even enter the museum. Um, and the related content box will warn you if the code already exists on the system so you don't end up creating duplicate codes. Um, but also know that behind the scenes there's a unique object ID which is a serial incremental number. Uh, you don't have control over that so all your objects will be unique even if you end up using the same codes perhaps two museums have the same acronym, um, so it doesn't matter too much, but it does make it a lot easier when you're doing cross-museum queries to have a proper acronym uh, where you can filter out the objects that belong to a particular collection. The alternative to codes, you can have as many as you like. Click on add another item if you'd like to add another alternative code. I'm not going to do one for this object. This demo object is going to be a high chair. Um, so under the common name, I'm going to enter some PWares high chairs, my common name. Um, the classified name comes from channel. If you know that you're looking for chairs, then you might just enter chair and then pick one of the options that comes up. If this high chair doesn't appear, which it didn't, we might try high and then there's high chair. If I didn't know what, that I'm looking for high chair, I'd like to browse the channel system. I know I'm looking for furnishings. So I'm going to copy and paste that into the parent level. And then under furniture, let's filter for that. And then let's have a look. So under term, let's filter everything that contains chair. Doesn't matter if you use um, caps lock or lowercase. Uh, uppercase or lowercase but we are cleaning up the terms to start with an uppercase letter and then the rest in lowercase um, so you will see this improve over time so now I can see high chairs appeared so I could copy and paste that into the classified name okay so all of these fields with a little round search circle um, you just simply start typing and complete choice. If I entered something here that doesn't exist, it'll give me an error message at the end. Under local name, I'd like to enter something like, um, let's see, um, Montague U IJ. Okay, it could be some community name for it or um, vernacular name various options that you can use for the local name. The quantity is usually one but you might have five, five
have chairs that you have strung together into a set. So we might be talking about the set here as our code. Then we would use, um, uh, you know, it might be one, one set of five chairs, or it could be five chairs as well as a set. And then um, in the description, we might explain that. It's completely up to you. It might be 3.4 kilograms of black muscle shell in an archaeological collection, for instance. Um, just be quite clear about what, you, what you've described in quantity under the object description. Let's just say one high chair. Okay, under parent, um, this is where we have collections like tea sets. So a saucer and a teaspoon and a cup might belong to a set. The set might be an object as well. Um, so we might have created that prior to creating all the subcomponents. Um, so you can then nest the, the particular object you're creating here and relate it to an object above, above it. If it um, doesn't belong to a set necessarily or uh, it's related to another set, we can create uh, a relationship and you can have multiple relationships. So we might have two T sets, for instance, that are related to each other Rhodes tea sets, uh, but the individual spoons and saucers and cups that we're creating might not belong to the pairing code of another set. They might just be related to, to two sets. So um, you know, pick the, the relevant codes that work for you, and that helps you to query the system later on uh, about things that are related to each other or things that belong to each other. So under owner, I'm going to use my museum example here. So I'm going to test museum. If it was loaned to the museum, it might be the owner as a person or an institution that's outside of the museum. Um, if various owners it might not actually be the museum that you work for, um, but by and large, most of the objects, normally the owner is simply the museum. If this doesn't exist, then click on create institutions or create people. Please don't put Mr. or Professor or Mrs. The uh, prefix is left out of the auto search. Um, so if I put myself, oh, I'll come up in the auto search and my node ID number will appear next to my name. Okay, that's very important in all these fields where you're referencing other content on Saurus that you wait for that node ID number to appear. If I don't see a node ID number, if I simply entered something like that, it will give me an error message at the end when I try and save my content. Okay, so that's the tip. Always choose the fields that come up. If they don't appear, create them. Under admin comments, this is used for mischief um, maintenance of the, the object. So it might be uh, high chair, So anything in managing that museum object in your museum can go under admin comments. Very importantly, the group audience is the museum that this belongs to. And then you have three modes. The group defaults and public are the same at the moment. Um, in general, your objects will be public uh, unless there's a very good reason to make them private. Remember the object itself is not describing the location of the object, so shelf nine, or, um, you know, it's a probably bad example to <laughs> specify the locations here under admin comments. So I would, for instance, put something like, um, So for this object, I'm going to leave it as public. Um, and we try and do this for all our objects so that the public researchers and so on are able to explore the information, the provenance, images, and so on about um, our objects. Um, something like rhino horn, which is being stolen um, at the moment, that might be set to, to private. And that means that all the information is only available to people in the organic group. Um, we'll also look at location tracking in some of the next chapters and you'll see the difference between those content types which are always private 
versus the default object content type, which is generally public. Let's call that the end for this chapter, and then we'll move on to the next tab.